Yes. Launch and pursue. I like that. Love it. God bless you. Welcome, welcome to today's broadcast. Cat on the Roof. Yes. Blessings. Thank you so much for your continued support. Mobile, Alabama is in the house. Hopefully you're going to yes. meet us in Huntsville. Absolutely. We look forward to, to meeting you. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for inviting your followers. Thank you for sharing. Call someone, text someone, inbox someone, and tell them to come on. God bless you, Diane Spikes, Michelle Strong Swift. You are amazing. We certainly appreciate you guys. You are awesome. We love you so much. Thank you for being part of our family. Joanna, God bless you so much. Good afternoon. My dear sister, I would love to see you very soon. God bless you, Prophetess Carlos. I tell you, God bless you, family. You guys are coming on and you are representing well. Houston, Texas, yes. Thank you. Savannah, Georgia, yes. Detroit, yes. Houston, yes. We appreciate you guys. My goodness. I tell you, I just feel such strength. I feel such love. Um, as you all are coming on, Rome, Georgia, Brooklyn, God bless you, West Virginia, Chicago. Yes, our wonderful family, Jenny Chapman, God bless you. Kelly Cook, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. My name is Diana. We thank God for you, Diana. Yes, absolutely. California, New England, God bless you. Our Jazzy B, amen. My husband sometimes calls me Jazzy V, so... <laughs> Dallas, Texas, thank you. Houston, Texas, Tarsha Marie, we appreciate you, woman of God. Kelly Cook, thank you all so much for sharing our video. We are excited, excited, excited about today. Um, we are just overwhelmed, just amazing as to what God is doing. He constantly um, shows himself strong and mighty. Amen. Charlene, we, we appreciate you. Uh, Apostle, be, I think it's be well. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you all so very much. Albert Love McClendon, you too, Albert. Yes. love you. We appreciate you. We're Excited coming. Excited about Denver, man. Yes, we're coming to Denver. Yes, Diana Harrison, good afternoon. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being a part of our Suddenly Season um, group on Facebook. Thank you for all of the different testimonies. Thank you for sharing with us your heart. Um, thank you even for your prayer requests, as many um, have hey, you know, solicited your prayer requests. God, met, God bless you. Yes, God bless you, uh, Brother Moses, all the way from Fort Lauderdale. Yes. By way of uh, Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> I see, I see, uh, I see Will Campbell. Okay. I see you, sir. Thank Good you for being afternoon. with us today. Bless Our number, you, listen, I'm going to get started because I, I got about 20 minutes. It's going to be a short scope today. We are in the middle of two different meetings. So if I were to turn my camera uh, to the left, you would see all of these notes. We had a leaders meeting this morning. Uh, staff meeting for our church and so um it's yes we missed you too last night we did we uh, missed you guys <laughs> i just had to get the rest before before I, I pass out so anyway so um this board has all this information about different things that we do in ministry and everything and i wanted to take a very quick moment and introduce to some of you uh the young lady who helps us to organize uh much of what we do here at our local church mm -hmm. and um she is, uh, she's been a daughter. She's been connected with us now for, uh, for years, and she's gone through all the discipleship process. I'm going to get to the text in a moment, amen? But uh, people often ask me who preaches when I'm gone, and I got a couple of different people that preach when I'm gone, but she is one of the primary people that preach when we are gone. Strong prophet of the Lord, really loves the Lord, mm -hmm. and um, she owns a company, and she's the CEO of a company called uh, The Bomb Mentoring. And so when I first heard it, I said, what does the BOM stand for? <laughs> and uh, the BOM is an, is an acrostic or an acronym for Bold Operations in Managing Business. Mm. And so she literally mentors and coaches people from all over the world in the subjects of business. And so who better to have somebody who is your operations director than somebody who does that? So I want to give her an opportunity to say hello and to greet you guys. She does, uh, she does a lot of Periscopes and Facebook Live, so I wanted people to know who she is. Because, um, again, my job is always to promote sons and daughters and to bless them and to, um, to, to let them be exposed. So come on, right. talk to them. Good afternoon. 
So as Apostle and Prophet has said, my name is Keandra Ward and I'm the owner of The Bomb Mentoring, which is Bold Operations for Managing Business. And essentially, we help purpose-driven entrepreneurs navigate through the crossroads of entrepreneurship. What does that really mean when I say that? A lot of times in business, we get to the point where we're stuck. We may have started, we may have started and stopped, and that's pretty much where we come in. Or we're just at the brink and we don't know where to go. And so, of course, with the guidance of God and my leaders and even people that support me, we help you to look to pan that out, to flush that out. What does that really look like so that you can have a sustainable business and have something that truly has value in the marketplace and in the kingdom? And that's pretty much uh, who we are and what we do. And a lot of that came from me having to stop and start. I was in the cosmetology industry for over 20 years. Um, and then I had to stop and take care of family. And in that transition, I had to decide what to do. And that's pretty much where my uh, vision was developed in that transitional period. And why not help others in their transitional period? And that's where we came. And that's how we started. Awesome. Wow. What are a couple, a couple of the different things that you really focus on? Some of the different programs you have, what you call the Pick It Back Up yes. um, program. Could you just call, talk about a couple of the things that you really offer? Yeah. So the Pick It Back Up is a six-week business and development program. Um, a lot of times people that come through the Pick It Back Up program have completely started their businesses and stopped. And they stopped for many reasons. They didn't know where to go with marketing. They didn't know how to flesh out their idea. They, weren't, um, they, di they didn't develop their true ideal client. They weren't truly understanding what their why was and why they were doing what they were doing. So in that six weeks, we really flesh out of uh, that process but mm -hmm. I start a lot with you as a person mm -hmm. one of the things I always say is until you understand who you are as a person you'll never understand who you are in life or in business mm -hmm. and that's the good and the bad of who you are as a person because when you take it uh, from life it's gonna go into business so we sometimes think that's life and that's business but they're intertwined right. if you have a person a personality disorder and or trait in life, it will come out in business, good or bad. And so we help flesh that out. And with that, that allows you to see who you need to bring on your team to help you in those areas so that you can sustain and you can maintain. Mm, that's good. Awesome. That's good. And, you know, and I, I, let me say this, too. I've really seen, remember I did a scope the other day, uh, and the scope that I did, well, I was talking about the fact that many people are waiting on their suddenly season, but they don't have a plan. And so... One of the things that I say is mm -hmm. that you need to have a plan for your suddenly season. Right. And so for me, one of the things that I've always done is I've kept people around me who have the ability to staff my weaknesses. They have the ability to help me and my wife. Uh, now, my wife, she doesn't really have any weaknesses. Hey, Amen. It's just me <laughs> that's got the weaknesses. Oh, I have Praise some. the Lord. Trust me. Uh, but, uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, um, but, but she really helps me. She helps me to maintain uh, focus and order, and she says, okay, Apostle, that may not work. And so I have to be able to listen to the people right. that God has put in my life right. uh, because it's our, it's, it's so who you tell them where they can find your, your website or your name on Facebook or Periscope. You can find me at Keandra Ward, K E A N D R A W A R D, and thebombmentoring.com. On Periscope and or Facebook, under Keandra Ward, you'll be able to find me or the bomb mentoring, B O M B. M-E-N-T-O-R-I-N-G dot com. Okay. And then you're getting ready to start your leader, your business institute as well. Yes. We are starting Keystone Business Institute, which will be an online platform that houses courses and classes that you can take, uh, self-study, and then we'll also be transitioning that into the corporate sector, being able to do uh, leadership and training in the corporate sector as well. Wow. Yes. Really proud of you. you. And, uh, and then for many of us as we're traveling, she's also going to... Uh, be able to, she's going to travel with us and come and minister. And uh, again, she's strongly prophetic, a strong prophet of the Lord and uh, healing, deliverance, miracle signs and wonders, all those mm -hmm. things she moves mm -hmm. in. And uh, so she's not just in business. She's a prophet, an ordained prophet in our house, but she also has the ability to operate in the marketplace. Because I think right. prophets should be able to operate in the marketplace as well. Mm -hmm. If that's your call. I'm not putting everybody in that and said pigeonholing everybody. Right. But um, somebody, else, somebody asked for your website one more time so they make sure they got it. The bomb mentoring.com t-h-e-b-o-m-b mentoring m-e-n-t-o-r-i-n-g dot com mm -hmm. now somebody put the boom mentoring it's bomb <laughs> like, <laughs> like bomb like blow they up boom a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so anyway so we love you Thank and you. I know you gotta run cause we got God another meeting 
that we got to get to down the street and um and she's going to go coordinate that so anyway let me talk to you real quick i want to talk to you about something that i had on my heart and i was uh dr driving this morning driving into the office uh here at the church and i was thinking about this thought and uh and as i looked at the text of scripture most of the texts kind of agree concerning this and uh, one of the things that I was looking at is the fact that um, we often talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection, or the right. death and the burial, but we don't we skip from the death and the burial over to the resurrection. Right. We don't deal with the part between. And why I think it's so important for us to deal with the part between the death and the burial, and then the skip that the skip that goes in there between the resurrection mm -hmm. is the fact that many of us in our literal state, in literal life, are dealing with that. Right. Oftentimes, life has literally buried you. Life has dealt you its deadly blow, mm. and you're in that position where you're ra waiting on your suddenly season. You're waiting on God to resurrect you. You're waiting on God to breathe upon you mm -hmm. again. And so everybody again focuses on either your death and how it felt to die and be crucified or they focus on the resurrection but we don't focus on that in-between time mm -hmm. and let me tell you something if you don't navigate that in-between time the way you should Jesus. it can be dangerous for you amen yes. and so uh again life has dealt, dealt, dealt with you some, some 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 tough times amen and uh and that's that's all of our lives we're always yes. going to endure some challenges yes even as she says she developed her business because she understood that she was in a tough place in right. between uh life throwing her biggest blow now she didn't say it but her mother encountered some sickness and went through some tough places and this is why she had to come out of her job in corporate America and her and her business ownership now she comes into a place where life has thrown something at her mom all of a sudden gets sick and so now she's in that in-between state before right. God resurrects her and so what do you do in between, in between. your death and burial My and God. the resurrection that that's the good. question yes. that I'm dealing with yes. today amen because yes. even with Jesus again when I look at the text of scripture we, we go from one chapter where he is talking about where the, the, the behold this is where he's laid yes. and then we look at the next one where they come on the first day of the week amen and so what do you do in your in-between time what do you Jesus. do when things are not going right what My do you do when, when it seems like life is thrown at you what do I do when all challenges and storms come Jesus. at you and now you're in a place where life 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 has hit you yes. and you're waiting on your resurrection my god you're My waiting God. to be resurrected. You're waiting yes. on God. Amen. Yes. And so I'm, yes. I'm going to deal with that tomorrow. Even our text tomorrow, I'm going to deal with that. Amen. Uh, I like that reset before you resurrect. Amen. And so, yes, I love that. So now here we are in this in-between time. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you don't handle in-between the right way, if the, if the children of Israel Jesus. did not handle... Uh, if, if the children of Israel didn't handle their in-between time between their release... From Egypt and then being going into their promised land, they yes. didn't, and it cost them a lot longer yes. than it would have taken them. Yes. And so the question yes. is, when life throws its best punch at you, I love that, Jenny. When life throws its best punch at you, Amen. Yes. What do you What do you do when life hits you as hard as it can hit you, and challenges and storms and problems hit you? What do you do then right. before God resurrects you? Right. When you're in the middle, mm -hmm. when you're in the middle of between the promise and, and, and the prophetic word, mm -hmm. when you're in the middle and faith is for the middle, hmm. faith is not for the beginning because you received the word, but faith is for the middle. It is in the middle where it seems as though, and there are times when God doesn't say anything. There are times when it seems like resources are low and, and all hell is broken hmm. loose in your life because why the enemy is after the promise. So if he can stop you and get you out of place before the promise, he'll do just that. And so he targets you in the middle. He targets you at a place where, where you're trying to press and you're trying to endure and you're trying to overcome some things. And so it seems as though sometimes th th those are the places where you, you don't have everything that you need. And, and it seems like everything is crazy and it's upside down. It is when the storm is, is raging and the wind is blowing against you. It is in the middle. It is in that place that you're you have to dig in. You have to dig in with your heels. You have to have grit. You have to be able to overcome. You have to be able to continue to press toward the mark for the prize of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus, because there is a prize. If God promised it, he's going to, hmm. he's already fulfilled it. So we've got to press um, through that place in that place. And it, it, it is usually in the middle part. It is usually sometimes when you have, when you have, when God says, I'm moving you, I'm transitioning you. It's the time when you put in your two week notice. 
and you, you've, re they've, you've been released from your job and all hell breaks loose. And it's like, oh my God, where is the money? I, I, I don't have this and that. And so that's where faith kicks in. That's where you're believing God and knowing that God has done what you don't even see. Hmm. It's good. You, you know, let, let me tell you something now. <laughs> That you know, it's easy. This is why I'm, I'm always very careful. I was talking to our leadership team. I said, you know, it's always very easy to judge somebody yes. when they're in a place uh, of transition. It's always easy to judge them. Well, why aren't you doing it this way? Or why didn't you do this? Or why you you know why did you let this do say? this to you? Yes. And, um, and and but you know the reality is with all of our lives, can we be honest? It's easy to judge somebody when you're not in their situation. Jesus. But the harder, but while the reason why we all have to go to the middle is because when we're in the middle, it teaches us how to treat other people when we see them yes. in the middle. Amen. When <laughs> yes, when when their when their energy is zapped. Amen. When they don't have the strength. Jesus. When they when when they're not in their place of strength. It's easy to look at somebody and say, my God, oh, you know, you should be doing this or you should be doing that or their breakthrough didn't come. How many times have you heard somebody say, oh, you just need more faith or you just need to be able to believe God more or you need to be able to do this and you're like, my God, man, I mean, I got faith. I've, I've been a, a faith. I didn't get this far right. by, by, by not having faith, but you're telling me that I don't have enough faith right now. No, that's not, those are not the people you around, need around you that, that are judging you and being critical of you and being critiquing you yes. in that season. Yes. You need some people around you that's going to pray with you and stand with you and hold you up and lift up your arms. Amen. Mm -hmm. It was in the middle of the battle. Amen. That, that, that Moses began to, his arms began to get heavy and he needed yes. an Aaron and a her yes. to help hold so up his arms, his arms so that he did not, he was not as tired yes. as he would have been. Amen. Right. So you need people around you in that time. Cause I'm telling you, people say, Oh, just read your Bible, quote the word. Yeah, that sounds good. But when I get tired, when I'm in my place and I'm tired and I'm frustrated and, uh, and I just really want to literally give up and quit right. because everything in life. And let me tell you something else. Every level that you go to, you're going to experience a different, uh, a different struggle, a different fight. Right. So it's easy to judge somebody. Uh, I had somebody ask me one day, uh Oh, let me, uh, let me pick on somebody. <laughs> I asked somebody, somebody asked me one day, well, you, uh, pastor, it seemed like you ought to be able to do that. I said, you know, it ought to be easy. And then I said, well, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let you, I want you to preach this Sunday. And uh, I want you to I want you to preach this Sunday. I want you to lead us, and then not only I want you to lead this church, I want you to lead all the other churches that are responsible for leading. And then I want you to go ahead and I want you to deal with my children and uh, and deal with my bills because your bills are a little bit different from my bills. You got uh, just that one little bill. You mean you you have a you know your thing that you do, and I got that bill. I got my home bill. I got the business bills. I got that business bills and my ministry bills and my church bills that I'm concerned about. So my level of, of, of dealing with it may totally be different from your level of dealing with it. Amen. Yes. yes. And, and people, so we got to deal with that. Absolutely. People will never understand your sacrifice until it's required of them. Mm -hmm. They would never understand your walk, never under, fully understand your walk. It could be your family. It could be people that live in the house with you and they will not understand your walk. They will not understand your assignment because it's not given to them. And so sometimes people will look at you and they will say, Oh, I can do that too. Or I can do it better, but they don't understand the grace that God has given to you. And so they'll try to duplicate it or whatever, but God is taking where God is taking us. Some of us, we've never been there before. We've never seen it happen. And so it's going to take a level of faith. It's going to take for us to continue to persevere and endure while we're in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yes. Amen. So you, so again, you just, you, you cannot, uh, when you're in the middle, you have to find those people that you connect with. When you're in the middle, Jesus. you have to have people with you that are going to strengthen you because sometimes, uh, your middle may be different from my middle. Yes. Your middle may be right. in a place where, you know, you're in the middle of divorce. You're in the middle of, uh, of, of transition with ministries. You're in the middle of getting your business started. You're in the middle of, right. of closing a business. So you have right. all those different pieces Absolutely. Uh, that you're dealing with. Again, you your yes. middle may be totally different Absolutely, from my because, middle. You, you know, even as you were saying with divorce, you know, God doesn't doesn't like divorce. He, he does not. But it may be someone that says they've been praying for, they've been praying for a release. And so their middle of divorce will look differently than somebody that says, I want my marriage to stay together. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be able to understand that and recognize that and just look at the person that wants their marriage to stay together and say, oh, child, don't worry about that. It's, it's all good. But that's, that's the, their middle is their different. Middle, totally yes. different. Yes. Totally different. So when you're in your middle, amen, we want to we pray that your middle would be a place that you would not, number one, stay there too long. Mm -mm. Number two, you would find people who would encourage you in your middle. 
Yes. And uh, yeah, somebody says, I want my I marriage. I want my Amen. marriage. Absolutely. Amen. So you, you know? fight in your middle. You fight for the thing that you believe in God for, that you don't allow the enemy to come in and say, God, what you've joined together, no man can put asunder. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fight for this thing. I'm going to cry out on behalf of my marriage, on behalf of my husband. I call him as a mighty man of valor, oh. a man of strength. You know what? You just, you just answered a good question for people that are married. Think about this now. Do you know, like sometimes people have those, you know, you have those girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And the girlfriend's like, girl, you ain't got to take all that. You ain't got to go through all that. You ain't, you, you know, it's a hundred other men out there that want to. Yes, there are. But I'm in covenant with this one. Right. And I'm not saying you stay there and take abuse. That's not what I'm saying. Yes. But you always yes. have that negative person who's going to tell you how to handle your situation differently from the instructions that God gave you. Right. Because God's instruction to you, because <laughs> somebody said, girl, bye. I like <laughs> <laughs> your instru your instruction to, from God may have been, he's going to change. Right. Uh, she's going to change. Absolutely. Uh, what what did you say? Oh, tell the story that you told this morning. You were talking about how the person found the person, and they had uh, what was it? You said they had. Oh uh, yeah, there was a, a a couple that I that I know, and um, they were just saying sometimes you can always the person that God has for you is not always the perfect person that you see, mm -hmm. that you really naturally see. They may not have this, that, or the other. And, they, and the wife said when they met, you know, their husband, he had on blue suede shoes and had buck teeth. So she took him to the store, bought him some shoes, and got him a dentist. Mm. You know, so we have to be able to not just look at, because man, of course, looks at the outward. Mm -hmm. It's God that looks at the heart. And so we've got to be able to, to understand that um, uh, and where we are and where they are in their season of life. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, in their season of life. So, um, you know, wanted to just really encourage you all today because um, some of you are in the middle. Some of you are waiting. You're, you're in that process of waiting. It seems like, you know, your dreams have been buried. Your, your, your goals have been buried. Your ministry has been buried. And so we look and we say, my God, here am I in this place. But I know what you said. And so it is in the middle of being buried and then um, uh, to the place of resurrection. Yes. Yes. Let me tell you, somebody said that they, some about a drug dealer did his time and now call. Let me tell you something. I got some friends Jesus. who are some of the most powerful preachers that I know yes. that came out of prisons, that came right. out of places of incarceration. Amen. Yes. And, and, even, and prison might have been their middle. Hmm. Prison might have been their middle to define them, refine them, transform hmm. them. So we never know. We they can wouldn't never... be who they were had Absolutely. they not been there. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't know that the things that God is going to use in your process. Yes. Because the things that I went through, I would never have imagined it. Mm -hmm. Never would have imagined. Neither would you have wished it on anybody else. Absolutely not. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. But God used that in my middle to get me where I needed to be. And so, you know, um, you know, as I look back over my life and, and God gave me an, an awesome career and I loved it. And he allowed, afforded me the great opportunity to serve in ministry. But here I was in this place because I still had a purpose. I still God had, and I had a promise from God, but here I was in this place where the doctor sent me home to die. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like everything about me was about to die. My dreams, my goals, my visions, my career, everything was about to die. And so God was preparing me for that middle. He was preparing me. Mm -hmm. And so he gave me a strategy. He said, you need to get into a place of worship. You need to seek me. You need to take communion every single day. You mm -hmm. need to cry out unto me. You need to get into that, to that quiet place where you're not moving, when you're not so busy because we can come so, become so busy with life. Sometimes we become more busy with the things that God did not tell us to do than the things that he really did tell us to do. So it comes a point in time where God says, I need to, I need to bring you into a place that I, I need to deal with you. I need to deal with you one-on-one. -on -one. And sometimes that's in that middle place. And so even as, even as I begin to, to obey the voice of God, when I stopped fighting the process of what God was trying to do in my life, then he positioned me. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. he positioned me so that I could receive my promise. And I'm sitting next to it. Jesus. <laughs> Thank the Lord for you being positioned for your promise. Come on, wasn't somebody. something I was looking for at all. I mean, God ordered my steps. He told me to go to this particular church service on this particular Sunday morning. He woke me up early that morning. I didn't understand it. Um, I had been, you know, someone had been inviting me for the past two or three months, and I said, you know, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. So God wakes me up, and He said, go. And and here I was, and I'm like, I had to make a decision. Am I gonna go? Am I not gonna go? So of course I went, and in the process of being obedient in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
in the crazy place, in the weird place, in the place and that didn't make... And even the place make, of silence sometimes. Yes. In place, the place of confusion. Absolutely. In that place where I'm like, God, I don't feel like being around nobody today. I don't. I just don't feel like it. But when God spoke to me, Amen. I obeyed his voice. And in obeying him, we met two months later, we got married. Amen. Yes. So I'm telling you, even in that middle place, because I yes. feel like there were people that, that this message was for, I had yes. no idea where God would take us. I just had to be obedient to say, God said, what happens in the middle? Jesus. What happened between the death and the burial and, and then the, the resurrection? resurrection? And so God's getting ready yes. to resurrect many. Yes. But in this, Ooh, in God. this, in this time between your suddenly. Yes. Yes. Somebody said they're in a place of, uh, of silence and it's discouraging. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Yes. You know, I've always said in the place of the middle, you keep doing what God told you to do yes. and keep doing it quietly. Amen. Keep right. doing it. Keep doing it quietly. Sometimes the middle is a place of reflection. Right. Yes. Sometimes we just need to reflect mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. what God has told us mm -hmm. already. Yes. Because sometimes he's not giving us new instructions. He's just telling us to stand still and see his salvation. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Because God didn't leave you. Right. Woman of God. Yes. He didn't forsake you. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, he did not forsake you and he did not leave you. Mm -mm. He is not, he has not forgotten about you. But what he is doing is he is observing to see what you're going to do in this middle place. In the middle. What are the instructions that he is yes. already giving you? Yes. What is it that he already told you to do? Let me ask you a question. Sometimes, you know, because we're a prophetic church, I, I have to deal with things differently. Sometimes I'd be like, man, uh, let me ask you something. That's what good. You... God will reboot you in the middle. In the middle. I asked somebody, <laughs> I said, what in the world are you doing with the instructions God already gave you? Right. You've been to the altar 50 times for a prophetic word. So what are you doing with the instructions you already have? Amen. Mm -hmm. So God was watching over our, 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 uh, our whole thing, everything we're doing in our middle season. Right. But what I will say about is that God has not forsaken you, nor has he forgotten you. Yes. He knows right where you at. And yes. you're, and you're a prime candidate for a suddenly. Yes. When Absolutely. the things are quiet and you don't know what's going on, I'm telling you, you're oh a prime candidate yes. for a suddenly. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, anything else on your heart? I think that's it. I mean, just 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 know that um, you're coming out of the middle. You're going into um, the place of resurrection. You're going into that place because you got to know, even as Christ, you've been crucified with Christ. You've been buried with Christ, and you have risen with Christ. Just as Christ is, so are you, um, even now in the name of Jesus. So, God, I just thank you that they will continue to keep their eyes focused on you. They will continue to, to, to war. And many times, God will allow situations to come into our lives so that we can know how to war, that we can understand how to overcome and defeat our enemies, whether they're enemies on the outside or whether enemies are inside of us. We need to understand how to war, how to go before God, how to cast everything before him, how to um, look within ourselves to see, okay, God, what is limiting me? What is stopping me? Why am I in this place? What is the purpose of what I'm going through? God, what is the purpose? Because if you don't understand the purpose, then you will never receive what it was intended to be in your life. Amen. You know, let me give you another one real quick. Somebody asked, um, uh, even, even when you ask about the issue of, you know, what do we do in the middle? Somebody asked that question. I'm going to tell you two things. Two things that I saw that happened in the middle. One, Jesus went to sleep. You know, they said, we're going, he got in the ship. We said, we're going to the, the other, other side. side. Jesus went to sleep because he, he had trust in his father. Yes. Sometimes anxiety can be a lack of us really just giving everything over yes. to God, number one. But not only on that end, uh, you remember David said, now this is a different level. That's when your faith graduates from trust, I mean, from faith to, to trust. trust. Because David says, what did he say? He said, man, I went to sleep and my sleep was, was sweet. sweet. And so I'm, I'm learning that when stuff gets crazy, yes. man, I'll just go somewhere and go to sleep. Yes, yes. And, and, uh, right, and Peter and I, went to sleep because Peter was an entirely right. different level with God when he was able to go to sleep than he went to before. Rest in God. Right. That's it. Surrender and rest in yes. God. That's a major one right Sometimes there. Sometimes you have to praise your way through. Mm -hmm. You have to worship your way through. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, if you, and, and again, if it's at different levels, mm -hmm. some levels you may have to praise and worship. Some levels you just rest. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, God got mm -hmm. this. I'm, and listen, ain't no use of me and God staying up late <laughs> all night. Now, either God's going to stay oh, up late God. or I'm going to stay up late. Yes. But both of us can't do it. No. Amen. Both two people no. can't occupy the same space at the same time. Absolutely. So, God, I'm going to let you do this. I'm going to sleep. Mm -hmm. See you later. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Come on. Yes. So, yes. we love you guys. Love and uh, we thank God for you. 
I'm not posting any announcements or anything this time. We'll do some of those tonight. Saturday is usually our biggest night. And so um, so we're looking, hopefully tonight, it's, it's the night before the resurrection, so we should be up praying Jesus. for some, some resurrection power, my amen. God. And my uh, so God. I'm, I'm excited, amen. Yes. My daddy's girl, it's God has got it. Oh, you just go to sleep yes. and rest, amen. Put you, some, right. put you some smooth music on, put you, get you some aromatherapy going in your room, get you some, what, chamomile, what was that, that, um, uh, lavender what was that? Let's get you some lavender and just go to sleep, girl. Don't even be worried, don't even yes. be, don't be concerned about nothing crazy. God bless you, Janice uh, uh, Anderson Stevens. We love you too. Love bless you, you, great woman so, of God. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, rain uh, sounds. Yeah, get you some rain sounds. Sometimes I go to bed and I put on some rain sounds and I put and I go to sleep. You mm -hmm. hear me? Because I'm I know mm -hmm. God has it. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to let people and situations and circumstance stress me out in this season. I'm resting. I'm going to sleep. Uh, that's right. Somebody said they got them candles burning now. Yes, I love her. We bought this candle. I'm still waiting to smell it. She <laughs> bought this candle. What did you? Was it in Guatemala? Or Guatemala. In, she bought this candle in Guatemala. I wish we were home tonight. If you tune into the scope at night, I'll show it to you. Yes. And it's this beautiful one and it's got, and I'm waiting to burn it because it's got these, this beautiful smell to it. But yes. sometimes you just got to set an environment that lets you rest. Right. Go rest, Absolutely. go to sleep. Absolutely. I, if you don't have the money already, so if the money's not coming magically, it's, it's going to come suddenly, but I'm just saying there's nothing you can do. If you've done all that you can do, Rest in God. Amen. Absolutely. And you know what? Jesus Christ really gives us the perfect example of him being manifested in the word. And so we understand as we look at the life of Jesus, we see that God is faithful concerning his word, mm -hmm. that he sent him. It was prophesied that he would come. He came. It was prophesied that he would, um, he would lay down his life. Amen. And, but he would, he would be resurrected and it is true. And that's what Jesus and did. And that's exactly what you he did. You didn't see him in the tomb, arguing, fighting, wrestling. Cussing and doing everything he else. He said, it is finished. finished. He laid down and he, slept and rested. Absolutely. He knew that he could give it up mm -hmm. because it was going to be returned back to him again. Come on. It, Girl, you're yes. the priest of message. <laughs> I'm going to go give you an offering at the restaurant because of that. Amen. <laughs> Well, listen, we love, love you guys. guys. Thank love you. you so Jan, much. God bless you. We got to talk soon. We got to talk soon so we can get everything locked in and finalized. But uh, we're excited. I'm excited. Yes. We love you. We're yes. looking forward to seeing you soon. I'm headed to our next meeting. But thank you guys for being here. Prayerfully, we'll see you tonight. We pray that you'll see us tonight. We're mm -hmm. going to continue praying about being in the middle. We're going to pray about Jesus. resting in God because yes. we know that when we rest Jesus. in God, our resurrection is coming suddenly. Uh, listen, we yes. love you guys. God bless you, Pastor Joseph Davis. We're getting out of here here, but we'll talk to you soon. Amen. Somebody says they need some oil. Well, hey, make sure you log in and get it uh, for the meetings that we have upcoming. Right. For the meetings we have upcoming, I will say that the meetings we have upcoming, we have Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, next month, we're doing a gladiator camp. So make sure that you're there. Uh, they said they packed the place out. The last meeting they just had with Apostle Eckhart. Uh, and then right after that, we're going to be doing uh, Indianapolis suddenly meeting. And so uh, we have the other meetings that are coming up soon. So we look forward to seeing y'all somewhere. We love you. We thank Thank God for you, and we'll talk to you soon. I'm late for my meeting. I got to get there. We'll talk to you soon. All right? Bye-bye.